Okay, so the next part of this tutorial is on the deep muscles of the gluteal region, and these are small little muscles which mainly act as lateral rotators of the femur at the hip joint. So unfortunately this model here isn't actually that accurate, so I'm going to do a bit of flicking between diagrams and this um, 3D model just to try and explain things clearly, because I used to find this quite um, a tricky sort of area, because there's a lot of small muscles with precise origins and insertions, so I'll just talk you through that now. So these muscles obviously lie under the um, gluteal uh, maximus, the gluteus maximus, medius and minimus, um, and these muscles laterally rotate and abduct the hip joint. So I've just switched over to one of these old diagrams which shows things a bit more accurately. So we're looking posteriorly at the same view we were just looking at. So this is the cut gluteus maximus, medius and minimus and we're looking at these group of muscles here which lie under the superficial group. So I'm going to work from superior to inferior talking about the muscles. So just I'll quickly cover them first. So the most superior one is the piriformis muscle and this originates on the anterolateral surface of the sacrum um, between the anterior sacral foramina and it inserts on the greater trochanter of the femur. Below that you've got the gemella superior, below that you've got the obturator internus and this is the tendon of the obturator internus because the actual muscle lies a bit more medially and I'll show you that in a second. So then you've got the gemellus inferior. So in Latin the, words, the word gemellus is twin so these muscles are little triangular muscles and they lie above and below the, ob the tendon of the obturator internus. So these, all these muscles are inserting onto the greater trochanter. So the gemellus superior actually originates near the spine, the ischial spine, and it inserts obviously on the greater trochanter, but also along the border of the um, superior aspect of the obturator internus tendon. So the gemellus inferior inserts along the inferior aspect of the obturator internus and tendon and also at the greater trochanter. And these three muscles, the obturator internus together with the gemellus superior and inferior, um, insert together on the greater trochanter. And what these muscles do is that they laterally rotate the femur and they can also abduct. So the most inferior muscle is this muscle here, this quadrangular shape, so it's called the quadratus femoris muscle. And this muscle inserts on the lateral, sorry, originates on the lateral aspect of the ischium, just anterior to the ischial tuberosity, and then it inserts on the femur between the greater and the lesser um, trochanter. So this muscle purely laterally rotates the femur. So you've got the piriformis at the top, and then you've got the gemellus superior, obturator internus, and gemellus inferior, which insert together at the greater trochanter, and you've got the gemellus superior and inferior inserting on the top and bottom of the obturator internus tendon. And then you've got the most inferior muscle of the deep group, the quadratus femoris, which originates anterior to the ischial tuberosity and inserts between the greater and the lesser trochanter. So I've just switched back, back to the um, 3D model and I'll talk you through those muscles um, here. So these muscles are actually out of place so I'm going to get rid of them um, to make things a bit more accurate. I'll get rid of the tensor fascia latte and the iliotibial tract. So the piriformis muscle which you saw on that diagram was the most superior muscle and that originated on the anterolateral aspect of the sacrum between the um, between the anterior sacral foramina and it inserted onto the greater trochanter. So it ran from here along and inserted onto the greater trochanter. So this muscle 
run through the greater sciatic foramen. So the greater sciatic foramen is this foramen here. So it's not shown on this model, but you've got a ligament between the sacrum and this ischial spine. So the ischial spine is this little bump here, and there's a ligament connecting the ischial spine to the sacrum. And the space, and then you've also got the um, so this is the sacrospinous ligament, and you've got the sacrotuberous ligament. So the sacrotuberous ligament attaches to the sacrum and to the ischial tuberosity, so it runs more vertically like this. And then you've got this little space enclosed um, by the these two ligaments, and this is the greater sciatic foramen. So this little notch here is the um, greater sciatic notch. So the greater sciatic foramen is formed by the greater sciatic notch and the um, borders of the sacrospinous and the sacrotuberous ligament. So the piriformis actually runs through the greater sciatic foramen um, to insert onto the greater trochanter of the femur. So I've just switched back to this diagram. So we're looking at the same view I just showed you and this ligament here is the sacrospinous ligament and then you've got the you can see these two gaps so this is the great the greater sciatic foramen with the piriformis passing through it and you've got two little gaps above and below and different vessels and nerves pass above and below it so the sciatic nerve passes below the piriformis muscle in the greater sciatic foramen and you've got the um superior gluteal nerves and vessels which pass above the piriformis in the um, greater sciatic foramen. So it's important to know about the relationship between the piriformis and the greater sciatic foramen and that the sciatic nerve passes below the piriformis in the greater sciatic foramen. So I also mentioned the um, sacrotuberous ligament. So this is that vertically orientated ligament which runs posteriorly to the sacrospinous ligament and this runs from the ischial tuberosity and connects to the sacrum. So sacrotuberous ligament and you've got the sacrospinous ligament. So the piriformis muscle is innervated by branches from S1 and S2 and it laterally rotates and extends the femur. So just below we've got the gemella superior and remember this ligament attaching to the um, ischial spine, this is where the origin of the gem gemella superior is. So I'll just show you that. So here just looking at this model, this is the ischial spine and this is where the gemella superior would originate and it um, inserts on the greater trochanter. So the piriformis muscle lies above it and it originates on the anterolateral aspect of the sacrum and it passes through the greater sciatic foramen separating it into two bits so it runs through here and inserts onto the greater trochanter um, the obturator internus lies below the gemella superior so the gemella superior you can you know where that is because it lies on the ischial spine here so the obturator internus lies just below that and the obturator internus the the tendon runs just below the gemellus superior, so along here. Um, but the muscle originates on the medial um, aspect of the obturator membrane. So the obturator foramen is this foramen in the pelvic bone here, and it's actually covered by a membrane. So just showing you this diagram, we're looking anteriorly at the pelvis and the obturator foramen, and you can see this membrane which partially covers the obturator foramen and you've got this little opening above the obturator canal which isn't covered by the obturator membrane where uh, vessels and nerves pass through but this is the obturator membrane and you've got the obturator externus which um, attaches to this on the external surface but the obturator internus um, originates on the medial side of the obturator membrane so just looking back at this model so you can see that the obturator membrane would lie here and we're looking, so I'm rotating it posteriorly so we're looking at the medial surface of the obturator membrane 
and that's where the obturator internus sits. So it sits internally on the medial side of the obturator membrane. So the muscle belly lies here and the tendon passes up between the ischial spine and the ischial tuberosity. So it runs along here and it passes, so it bends around 90 degrees, the obturator internus tendon. So the muscle originates here on the medial side of the obturator membrane and the adjacent bone and the tendon runs below the gemellus superior and above the gemellus inferior so in this space here and it bends 90 degrees so you can see how it would bend round and it inserts onto the greater trochanter so that's the obturator internus muscle so both the gemellus superior and the obturator internus are innervated by the nerve to the obturator internus which comes from L5 and S1 and these muscles laterally rotate and, and abduct the femur so below we've just got the gemellus inferior so this originates on the upper aspect of the ischial tuberosity so back to this model again you've got the ischial tuberosity here so ischial spine you've got this space where the obturator internus tendon runs and below that you've got the origin of the gemellus inferior muscle so it arises from the upper aspect of the ischial tuberosity so here and again it inserts onto the um, greater trochanter so this muscle also externally rotates and abducts the femur so the final muscle of the deep group is the quadratus femoris so the quadratus femoris is the most inferior muscle and this originates um, just anterior to the ischial tuberosity. So just here and it's rectangular in shape, hence the name, so quadratus. Um, and it inserts between the greater and lesser trochanters on the femur. Um, so on the quadrate tubercle, on the intertrochanteric crest. So this muscle laterally rotates the femur. So both the gemellus inferior and the quadratus femoris are innervated by the nerve to quadratus femoris. So this comes from L5 and S1. So you can just see this muscle again here, this rectangular shaped muscle. So those are the muscles of the deep layer of the gluteal region. So just to go over those again, you've got the piriformis superiorly, the gemellus superior, obturator internus, gemellus inferior and the quadratus femoris most inferior so I'm sorry that it was a very long tutorial but I was trying to make that clear about where these muscles originate and uh, how they act so I hope that was useful uh, one, one last thing which you might be wondering about is the obturator externus muscle so this muscle isn't actually considered part of the gluteal region it's often thought of as um, being a part of the medial compartment of the thigh but this muscle lies on the lateral surface of the obturator membrane so if you remember the obturator internus it, it originated on the medial surface of the obturator membrane so that's why it gets the name obturator internus because it's on the internal surface of the obturator membrane so the obturator externus lies externally on the lateral surface of the obturator membrane and it winds round behind the hip joint so it originates here and it winds round behind the hip joint to insert in the trochanteric fossa so this muscle laterally rotates the femur but it's often considered um, with the medial compartment of the thigh rather than the gluteal muscles